Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to RVD Radio. Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Everybody, it's that time again. It's a Wednesday night when RVD Radio is on, or it's whatever fucking day it is that you're listening to the show. If you're not familiar with the show and you're a first-time listener, this is the part where you go and make a sandwich or twist one up because RVD is going to flap his gums for a few minutes. It's what we do. I call it a monologue, so it sounds more professional, but I'm just flapping my guns. It's February the 24th, 2010. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted, man. We didn't we didn't know for sure we were going to be here. And 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 I don't know for sure that everyone listening is going to be here on uh March 24th, 2010. Or I'd say happy March 24th right now, but some of us might not make it. Ooh, is that scary, eerie? No. All right. Well, it's real. It is reality. And uh, and I'm all about reality, not your silly little Jersey Shore reality shows, but reality, real reality. All right, I have some reality shows I like too. Uh, SVD is on her way here; she'll be joining shortly. She's late, but that's okay, because she's got the power. She's in that position. She's got that authority. Is she taking advantage of her authority? No, not really, because. That's cool. She's got that flexible cush e schedule, but we're going to talk about some uh, abuse of authority today, and I want Sonia's input on that, because sometimes it's really bad, 
And everybody can relate to uh, people that are in authoritative positions where they have some power over somebody, and it goes to their head. You know, I mean, there's some serious cases. All right? If you're talking about, like, Rodney King situation, something where the cops are uh, beating up on somebody that it looks like they, they're trying to uh, just apprehend, um, that's a little more serious, you know, and uh, some people will... Um, <clears throat> Not appreciate you laughing at it, but how about these people that that little bit of authority, that leverage that their job offers them, seems to be like the highlight of their life. You know, like like a parking lot attendant, they, they, where it goes to their head, and they have to run over there. You you can't park here, no sir. Do not park here. It's like, well, take it easy, buddy. I'm just fucking turning around. There's people like that. I love and. Um, Sadie always calls them out and says, respect my authority, some shit like that. You know, it's from a cartoon. But also, I want to talk about role models, and everybody can relate to that, because we all have role models, or we are role models, or both. And uh, here's the deal with that. Uh, You don't have to be a role model. I mean, you know when you seek out certain careers that, that is perceived as a role model position, Um, but uh, also what you don't realize is that everybody is a role model, okay, Um, for something. I mean, I think really almost almost everybody is. They're definitely one or the other. And if you serve as a model for somebody to pattern their role after, guess what? Boom. You're a role model. I mean, you could just be um, delivering papers, and uh, and there's a new paper boy that's uh, watching you so he can learn from you, then guess what? You're serving as his role model. If you're a parent, of course you're a role model. In fact, adults serve as models for, for kids. They look up to kids. And uh, a lot of people associate role model with just being famous. You know, If you're a celebrity, boom, right off the bat, role model. Well, you know, that's not a very role model-like that's just because they reach out to more people than someone that's not famous that is not exposed to very many people. That's the only difference there. And and like I said, the occupation uh, warrants, you know, more or less people of certain demographics wanting to uh, to model their uh, their own roles after. Um, when I was a kid, obviously some of my role models were wrestlers, you know, and um, and then some of them, uh, after uh, I was an adult and looked at them as adult perspectives, oh, my God, that was a role model for me. But guess what? It got me here. It got me where I am. You know, someone like uh, Tiger Woods, a pro golfer, uh, definitely a role model because uh, look at him. I mean, from so many different perspectives, just from the perspective of a, a successful man, you know, or, or a successful sports figure, uh, someone that's worth a billion dollars, you know, uh, that's a role model. He's in a position, you know, where people would strive to be like him, to take after him or whatever. And then when they fall from grace, then they're judged because people want their role models to represent the same values that they have, you know, especially if you're a parent, if your kid uh, is looking up to another adult, uh, well, that adult's not you. So how do you control the uh, the messages that your kid is receiving? You know, I mean, you have to filter that and stay on top of it and do uh, whatever it says in the in the parent manual. But um, there's do you need to go outside here? My dog's interrupting the show. She can do that. She's got that power. Um, Anyway, uh, they, you know, say your say a kid looks up to somebody like Snoop, Snoop Dogg, right? Ooh, but he but he talks about marijuana and stuff. But guess what? Uh, he's a role model. In fact, any but there, there, there's a controversial point right there. But anybody that's uh, like a musician uh, that, that sings, they have the messages in their songs people listen to, uh, and will also pattern themselves after you know by the words the message that's in the song that's why with gangster rap when they talk about killing people and and slapping hoes and stuff people are so up in arms like oh the message there because they realize that that is a role that others are going to uh, choose to follow so 
Anyway, uh, you're a role model, but you can't choose who will want to roll after you. And that's how we roll. And find Boner. Anybody that has seen Boner, call RVD Radio immediately. Shouldn't laugh, but it just sounds funny. But really, Andrew Koenig, I guess, the actor, is missing right now. He was Boner on uh, on Growing Pains. I thought it was Family Ties. I totally had Boner mixed up with Skippy. And uh, he's not Skippy. He's, he was Boner, and he was from Growing Pains, and he's missing. And nobody knows where the fuck he is. And so that's how uh, that's how we're going to start the show. And I'm going to go right to producer Nikki Star Blog Talk. No, no longer Blog Talk. I uh-huh. would be radio producer. Nikki Star, what's up? <laughs> I'm just your producer. I know. You know what? I had an email from Blog Talk yeah, Radio me. saying that they overpaid me. <laughs> in some you kind have of, to be kidding. No. It, said, it was funny. It said, as you know, you were overpaid. Like, I even noticed they fucking dropped a couple of quarters in my PayPal account. But as you noticed, you were overpaid. And so they're going to somehow something out of the next couple of months. I don't know. I guess it happened a few months ago. But I thought it was pretty funny. I just noticed it. It is funny. Yeah. Hi, Nikki Star. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. SVD's not here yet. She's going to be making her grand entrance, as always. Yeah. So, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, as you know, we haven't done a show in a couple of weeks. The last show was the big show that Hulk Hogan called in on. So, Check this out, y'all. I have to give all these kudos to Rob and to Hulk and to me because I did send it to the wrestling sites. That show was number one on Blog Talk Radio for two weeks. It had Yay. mega downloads. Awesome job, and it was really a great show. Hey, you know what? I just noticed when you said that um, none of my music or soundbite files are are highlighted. What do you mean highlighted? Should I re- wait? Let me. I'm gonna try and reset it because that's what you usually tell me to do. On my um, the uh, oh, there they are. Oh, the caller info. Uh, no, this. Hold on, we'll test it right here. Oh, we did, motherfucker. Okay. I reset it. So, anyway, the garage just heard the garage door and the uh, Casa de Van Dam. So, that means, good news, that uh, Sonia will be making her way towards the RVD Radio Studio soon. So Good, because I missed her, and she's the class on this show. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And she's out, She's done with class now, because she's been going to Spanish class for the longest time. And, and so, now, um, so, now she's here. And, uh, or she's doing class for Thursdays, I think, for a couple of weeks, and then she's done. But anyway, yeah, last show was huge, Nikki Star. You said that it was, uh, when you gave me that report, that it was already downloaded, like, I don't know, six times is, is, or, or more um, oh, huge. than we normally get. That was still, I'm sure, a couple of weeks before, and I'm sure it's still being downloaded. And it's still the last one that's on there when you go to the website to look and see the most current RVD radio before tonight's. It was awesome, and and really, you did such a good job. Hulk Hogan, motherfucker. I know, right? I was so starstruck. So anyway, we took a couple of weeks off. I don't always feel like doing the show, and sometimes I'm too busy um, or whatever. But that's the nature of the show. We just uh, do it and put the word out that we're doing it when we do it. It's come. It's been like that. It used to be every Wednesday. Maybe it will be again. I don't know. But we felt like doing the show tonight. And so for a topic, Nikki Star, we got a couple of topics here. Um, hey, by the way, have you seen Boner? I think I might have seen him at the 7-Eleven the other day. Dude, report that shit because uh, he's de- he was depressed and his family was very upset. Do you know him? Couldn't be joking. It's, well, I'm, I'm laughing at his nickname. But, but it's crazy. Boner's missing. Find him. Okay. Um so, uh, role models, Nikki Starr, uh, what do you think of when I say, who was your role model growing up? Bam, what pops in your head? I didn't have one. You did, though. You so did. See, that's you what you don't realize. Did. Everybody, like, even when you watched Brady Bunch and you said, oh, Marcia's so pretty, I want to be like her, and, and, and if she can wear braces, I can wear braces, I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't have to be like a real person that actually was like a big brother, big sister program, but took you out and went bowling with you and shit. You know. I have already been thinking about this since she sent me the email two days ago, and I never had one. I just didn't. That is so crazy. We're going to open your mind up on this show, and you're going to realize. You're going to say, well, 
I guess when I watched Alice, I wanted to be like Vera. I didn't think she was a dinghy. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt you'll say that. But are you serious though? It's that hard to find. I mean, what about even like when you were like real little? Didn't you like watch? Um, I don't know, Sesame Street or Barney or whatever the hell little well, kids. Yeah, but I didn't want to be Big Bird. Oh, but but didn't they? But okay, so but just you don't necessarily have to want to be just like or become your role model, but it's somebody that sets that sets the guidelines, you know, for you to follow, like they, I think, that that a role model is also someone that puts out um, a good image, uh, you know what I mean? Like, even if they're, even if it is someone, like Michael Jackson, maybe uh, a freak, you know, was on his own private time, but if what he was doing in his songs, what, you know, was uh, inspiring people, you know, and, and they were, uh, and they were inspired in a positive way by the messages through his songs to live a certain way, then doesn't that kind of identify him as a role model? I never had one. I mean, I've really thought a lot about this. I, I've, I have one now, but I didn't ever have anybody to look up to. I never had anything that was inspirational to me. Seriously. SVD, motherfucker! Sonia's in the kizzy. Hi. Hi. Hey, what are you doing in the kizzy? What's a kizzy? Get in there. I don't know. I don't know. What are you talking about? Hey, Nikki Starr says that uh, she didn't have a role model when she was a kid. Like, not she didn't nothing. Like she was I'm just like. I'm with Nikki on that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like I had nothing. I mean, I had you know there were no. They can't even really call them role models. See, because to me, to me, I I think when I was a kid that like I had so many like as a wrestling fan. You know, I mean, I had the wrestlers I looked up to, which obviously I followed their roles because I came, became a pro wrestler. But even, I mean, even like when I was uh, younger, you know, like uh, watching cartoons, I mean, some of those uh, cartoon characters even would be like my, my role. You know? For a while, hey, it was revealed, but then my mom really freaked out because of that movie she did when she was really young, and so she put the kibosh on that. She was a little whore. She showed her boobies when she was like 12 or something. Uh, I think that was on her mother. Not her. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> do you think, hey, SCD, do you George think that Burns role models might her. be a good thing? A What's that, Nikki? Do you think role models might be more of a boy thing? I think so. It kind of goes with the spandex action hero kind of bullshit. <laughs> we don't See, really have one. I, I mean, I don't... B- I had Wonder Woman underoos. Does that count? It does. It absolutely counts because I don't. I don't agree with what with what you what you're saying. I think we're gonna have some callers that that agree with me that, um, you know, even if it was like yeah, even if you know Wonder Woman or even if it was like when you would uh, watch the news and, and you would and you see Princess Diana and it would make you feel like ooh, you know, she's so elegant and classy. I want to be like her or or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, no. Wasn't like that. Was no. Nope. Just Wonder Woman? No, I know. Yeah, I she just popped in my head. Cause, well, how about Heidi Fleiss? No. Is she a good role model? Uh, if you're one For a of hooker. the hiring madam, yeah. Mm. I don't know. But, uh, well, all right, well, anyway, so what else? We're talking about um, abuse of authority, and you better be able to relate to this subject, Nikki Starr, because for role models right now, the jury's still out on you. But... I was uh, I was explaining, baby, that you always call people out when it's someone that doesn't have. Well, I, I shouldn't. Yeah, all right, fuck it. I am judging them. It seems like they must not have much of a life because they get this little piece of power and it goes to their head. And you're always calling them out, saying, "Respect my authority." When when somebody comes over, you know, and it's like it's like their job, you know, just to make sure that you know that nobody like. Uh, nobody goes like and crosses this rope or something. So when you go near it, they can run over there to do their job, you know. And you can't do that, and, and they take their job all seriously. And that does happen to me a lot. There's something about being a petite woman. Um, I apparently I'm approachable in that security kind of demanding authority sort of way. They love to tell me not to do shit. Like they love to assort their authority on me. Well, um, when we talk to Officer X, who actually I see him on the call list, I want to find out his opinion on uh, police uh, because I think if they actually um, tell if they they can't search your your car if they pull you over without you telling them that they can. And I'm not talking about police. I'm just talking about like you know. 
Securite guards. Oh, I can't move on? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about them still. So. My right. bad. No, we'll talk about what you want. Never mind. My bad. Man, she drops the bomb and runs out of the room, and she's gone just like that. Um, so, Nikki Star, um, authorities, people that have um, authoritative positions where they are temporarily the boss over somebody or they feel like they can, can you relate to that at least? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the blog talk radio bosses that Well, you I'm not going to say slave. anything. However, I did quit, remember? I know, he did. He did. Yeah. I know. So, um, well, cool. I mean, uh, that's like a big brother, big sister thing. They have authority over the younger ones, you know, so they can be like, no, no, I told you to, I told you, you had to sit there. Don't move, you know. I mean, when you're a kid, you do stuff like that all the time. You think, like, you you <laughs> abuse the, the, the freedoms of, of your other younger brothers or younger friends or whatever. I used to do that all the time. To Andy, we used to beat the shit out of him and keep him in line and make him, you know, walk a certain way or make him dress a certain way or whatever. That's a little bit abusive. I mean, that's a little bit crossing crossing lines, you know. But, uh, all right, well, Nikki Starr, uh, stand by and, uh, and produce this show. Yes, sir. All right. I Thanks. respect your authority. Thanks, Nikki Starr. Uh, I'm going to go right to a friend of mine that I see up here, and I told him I'd go right to him if he called in. Aaron from Ireland, you called in, dude. Hey, thanks, Rob. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, a little bit late over here. It's uh, 20 past 2 in the morning right now. 20 past 2 in the morning. That's uh, Yeah. Yes, sir. That is pretty late, man. Well, thanks for calling in. And um, Aaron is – how old are you, Aaron? I'm 15. Right. Aaron's a 15 – year old wrestling fan that I met at a live show back in I think September when I was wrestling in Ireland. Was it September? I don't know. I think so. Anyway. Yeah. 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 So he you really impressed me with this uh uh fan mail that you gave me, which I still have and it's just very touching and it lets me know that uh I've gotten through to somebody in ways that are important to me. It's something that just uh, that really, like, I, I took to heart, and so I'm always just, I'm always going to remember this kid, you know, and he's just, um, uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a friend to uh, RVD Radio tonight, so glad to have you on, and um, also 15 years old, but very smart kid and uh, very opinionated, so um, let me uh, bring you in on the topics. We got a bunch of callers, too, and as you know, Aaron, you, you listen to the show a lot, so you know we got our regular characters, so... Let me yep. go through and let me go through and open up some uh, lines. Oh, put your head, motherfucker! Oh, yeah, that's Officer X. Oh, he's never with us when I go to him. I'm with you. I'm with you. What the fuck? What the fuck? Well, you gotta say something when I say, "Are you with us?" I'm the fucking boss, cocksucker. All right, all right. Well, uh, let me let this guy in too, uh, just so it can get a little bit chaotic, because we're used to that. Bruce Jingles, motherfucker. Hey, RVD, this is Cartman. Cartman. There it is. <laughs> RVD, motherfucker. Dude, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, uh, Bruce Jingles, motherfucker. I need to do it. Sabu, motherfucker! <laughs> All right. You want to do a Bruce, Bruce Jingles, motherfucker? Uh, yeah, but I don't know how to record it and take it off there or whatever. Or I would have all kinds of sound bites and stuff. Sabu, you with us? My ear. All right, cool, man. Everybody jumped in the room so it can get all chaotic and everybody can talk over each other like we always do because that's how we do it here. So uh, we got Aaron. Aaron, I met. we met uh, Aaron Sabu on that AWR tour that we did in Ireland uh, recently. He was one of the fans that came up and got his pictures uh, with us after the show, and uh, we've been keeping in touch with them. So, Aaron, um, what do you think of when I talk about role models? You're at a younger age. So automatically, yep, yep. people people are going to think you're on the side of the equation where you're going to be looking up to a role model. Although I wouldn't doubt it if you're a role model yourself for somebody younger than you, or it doesn't even have to be younger than you. You know what I mean? It could be somebody that uh, you could be a computer whiz trying to teach me about a computer because I'm ignorant. And guess what? You know, you're you're like modeling for me in that way. Well, I think it's naturally healthy for a child to have a role model, someone he can look up to, someone that lives by a message that they give out and lives by that message 
and the child can try to live their way by the message that that person is sending out. If it's a positive message, then the child can live his life via the positive message. Example, if someone goes out and says, you know, don't, don't, do, too much, don't do too much alcohol or something like that, the child can follow that, and all in all, they're setting a good example. So I don't see anything wrong with role models as long as they set out a good example to the child. Or, or I've got to remember that the role models are trying to apply to all age groups. So not only have they got to please the younger generation like myself, but they've also got to please your generation as well, Rob. Mark Kidd, very well put. Officer X, um, a role model is a characteristic, I think, more than like a full-time position. Like people that are famous are more symbolic than actual real people. You know that. Like people can look up to this symbol, Rob Van Dam, and Rob Van Dam represents whatever, bravery, create whatever it represents but obviously me i'm a real i'm a real person just you know like anyone in my house would know but say you're a police officer obviously um everyone looks at a police officer as a as a role model for for citizens how to, how to act in society but what about when you punch off the clock are you no longer a role model because now you like to now you like to do some things you wouldn't necessarily want everybody else knowing about when you get on home and punch up uh you porn <laughs> hey, hey, let's hit, let me let me talk to Aaron for a second. What are you talking about? You born motherfucker. <laughs> Aaron, talk yeah. to Officer X. Aaron, where are you from? Belfast? Uh, no, actually, it's a small town called Oma, but it's about a two-hour drive from Belfast. Yeah, I've, I've got my family's from County Down, Nori, right? Really? Yeah, I can tell by the accent. Aaron What's their like surname? Family. I'm sorry? What's their surname? X. Oh. Right, what's, their, what's their address? What's their phone number? <laughs> hey, um, Officer X, I remember when I was a kid in school, we had a program where a police officer named Officer Friendly would come to the... Oh, great, someone's calling. Why do they call when I'm doing the radio show? How rude. That's cool. That happens, too. Let me let it beep again. Beep. Do it. Beep, motherfucker. Go. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Um, oh my God, we got a lot of calls. All right, boom. Uh, Officer X, Officer Friendly came to my school when I was a kid and and was teaching us, you know, about you know shit, that he, you know how to um, what to watch out for for Halloween, to watch out for you know poison candy and this and that. So obviously, you know, we're taught at a young age when there's a police officer. Boom, you know, uh, act your best. Uh, they're the superheroes of society. That's who you go to when you need help. It's also somebody that you, you straighten up in front of so they don't, you know, put you in jail. Um, and, and that's a position you can't deny. You can't help it. If you accept that you're going to be an officer of the law, you're putting yourself in a position where you're a role model. Agree or disagree? To an extent. To an extent? Please explain. Yeah, I mean. Elaborate, motherfucker. <laughs> Excuse, motherfucker. You got to, you got to kind of walk the line in public. Like you, you still go home and be a regular guy. And, and those who don't are the dickheads that Don you was talking about. Now, can you think of a role model that is not like that? Like, is there a role model that is a twenty-four hour, you know, seven day a week? Like everything they do um, is. I guess maybe if they're on Big Brother, that reality show where they live with the cameras and shit. But they're, they're not role models on Big Brother. People are fallible, man. You can't, you can't to an extent, but to an extent, I think almost everyone on TV could be a role model. Like, they're, like well, let's say, let's say we watch American Idol, and we see some kid up there that looks like a total freak. Sabo, here's a question for you. Say we watch American Idol, there's a kid that's a total freak, that, and we're we're like... We're looking at this kid like, oh, my God, you know, I would hate for my kid to look like that. He's got his lips pierced up, his eye, his eyebrows are pierced, his, his, his face is all pierced. He looks like scary, you know, punk guy. Um, guess what, though? Not everyone is thinking that while they're watching that. There's other people that are thinking that, kids that are looking at that going, wow, that looks cool. I'm going to get that done. Taboo, the question, question is, is, isn't that guy a role model? No. Yeah, but I wouldn't say a very good role model. Yeah, right. I agree. I agree too. But that—that's the thing. That—that's what it comes down to is we're going to judge role models on our own values and on 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 what we think we would want 
um, our if we had kids to follow or or we would want to follow. You know what I mean? Like since everyone has different views, you know, I mean it's also very likely that why are you shaking your head no, baby? No, go ahead. I'm oh, okay. It's also You're very talking. likely it's also very likely, you know, I mean, a lot of people think President Obama um, would not be a good role model because they think that he's Muslim and because they think that uh, if you're Muslim that you want all Americans dead. So from their perspective, they think he's not a good role model. He's the president of the United States. But they're retarded. He's not Muslim. I know, but, I mean, the Republican, I and, and, he is. Yeah, and, 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 and that controversy still continues to this day. That fist bump, man, that was a terrorist fist bump if I've ever seen one. Indeed. All right, man, we have so many callers, but I you know, have to uh, yeah, how to take more callers without taking people off. So. You know, everybody's a teacher. No one is perfect. You take what you can learn from people. You admire some qualities, but no one's perfect. Uh, okay, but, I mean, can we choose our own role models then? Of course you can. What was perfect? Can we choose to be a role model or not to be? Yeah, but what if you think you're perfect and everyone thinks you're an asshole and you're not a role model for anybody. Other assholes. You're a role model for other assholes. But, but think about this. Some guys, some guys you work with, they're, they're probably role models for millions and kids that don't know who the fuck they are. And if they knew who they were, they'd think they were an asshole. Yeah, a lot of the wrestlers are just, you know, good old boys that happen to have a job, and then, boom, their job happens to put him up on TV, and it happens to land him an action figure, and they're completely um, almost oblivious to the fact that there's, like, little kids that look up to them. It's amazing. Michael Porter, thanks for calling RVD Radio, dude. How's Pepper? Hello, Rob. How's it going? It's pregnancy Pepper. Uh, everything's good. Tanya's asking about Pepper. Pepper's doing well. well Pepper and I are getting ready to move down to your neck of the woods on April 1st. Wow, April Fool's Day is the date, huh? Yeah, we Pepper, are. Pepper, uh... motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Bruce, how you doing? How are you? Good, and yourself? Good, good. Uh, yeah, we're we're moving down on April 1st. Uh, we finally got everything settled with the landlords up here, and uh, I I won everything. I got everything I wanted, and they're even going to help me with the uh, rental truck. So uh, Dude, they want me out of here bad. Congratulations. Hey, uh, Aaron from Ireland, I know that uh, you said it's super late there, so uh, w when you want to go, just say i, I got to tag out and leave. But I want to make sure before you go that you also contribute on um, abuse of authority. What you got Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right, man, what, what you got for us? Because uh, what comes to my mind, again, I remember being a kid. You know, a lot of it was being a kid, but I remember uh, my principal uh, when I was in high school, Mr. Tenney, and I couldn't stand him. I was always in trouble, you know, and I was always at the principal's office. But me and my buddy saw him at the mall one time, and this was after we were driving, so we must have been 16, somewhere around there. And we saw him at the mall talking to some other guy, and instead of calling him Mr. Tenney, we thought it would be so funny to disrespect him, you know, so we went up to him, and we were like, Tom, hey, Tom, good to see you, Tom, <laughs> nice to see you, Tom, hey, yeah, have a good night, Tom, we'll see you tomorrow, and we went off, <laughs> and we went off laughing, you know, like, oh, that was awesome, that was a shit, and then the next day, I got called down to the office to school, I'm like, what the hell, when I got, uh, and the, the, the principal told me, he said, um, I was talking to the principal of, of this other school in Lakeview, and you embarrassed me. And he said, you know, uh, I have half a mind to suspend you. And I'm like, wait a second. That didn't even happen on school grounds. Is this guy not abusing his authority by trying to uh, punish me for calling him by his name at a mall? How can that be breaking any school grounds? Disrespectful, yes, but authority has limits. And he was so pissed, he threatened to punish me with uh, uh, all kinds. He was going to suspend me, and then he was going to uh, give me all these eighth hours and all this. And if it ever happens again, he was going to kick me out of school, he said. I don't think – I think that's crossing the line, in my opinion. So, Aaron – Talking to you, 15 years old, um, I wonder how you can relate to this story. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, teachers, I think, in schools abuse their authority quite a lot. I mean, the incident you said with your principal, the reason why he shouted at you was probably because he cared about the image of the school. And another thing of our school is our school is a pretty prestigious, you know, people in the school are pretty smart, and our principal likes to keep it that way. 
And if any, there's a there's a girl in our my year, and she got a new haircut. She dyed her whole hair red, and it, the principal said, "Her, you can't do that. You have to change it." So the principal is making her change her hair because it doesn't apply within school rules. So he's taking away her right to ch- to cut her hair to whatever she wants. Right, and then and then you and then you get into all kinds of issues on whether she's a distraction at school and she's actually an instruction to education and other kids' welfare and I mean that one yeah. can be argued a bit. I, I I'm with you. I could I I would definitely feel like I was violated if I wanted to wear my hair a certain way. But now they have kids in school uniforms. That that shit wasn't like that when I was young. I mean that that amazes me. In summer school, where kids they're not even going like the regular. Uh, schedules, year-round schools. I don't even, I don't even get that because I'm out of touch with it. But uh, things are way different now. I could well, definitely. Well, I went to in my school. I don't know how things are over in the states, but if you walk about with your school uniform over here and you don't have your top button, you don't have it done, then you'll get a thing called a receipt. And if you get free receipts, you get a detention after school. And you could be caught with your top button undone three times, and you'll get a detention after school simply for not wearing your top button. Right on. Well, shit. There you go. Jingles, you were saying when you went to school in the ghetto, it was things were rough. You had to step over bodies. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I went. Well, okay. Well, like elementary school, I did go to school in the ghetto, and then um, uh, my my parents made me uh, made me go to school in the valley. And uh, so it was, a, it was a culture shock. Dude, you were a valley girl. Hey, yeah, dude. dude. That's yeah, awesome. Spoon, dude. Awesome. awesome. Hey, and, uh, hey uh, Bruce, have you seen Boner? I, I, we know Boner. For real? Yeah, he's Shelly. Remember when uh, they did that championship comedy show at IO, IOS? Yes. And that one that um, did, uh, me and uh, Swallow were on a tag team? You, he came you, with, he came you with Shelly. You swallowed Boner? What? No, no. No, me and Ron Swallow were on it, or in a tag team, that, you know. Um, he came with Shelly. Wow, so that's the last time the, the uh, comedy team has seen Boner. Yeah. And, and actually, he he did some stuff. I think he did some stuff at the Melrose Improv, too. Wow. All right. Well, well uh, let's get back to that. I got I want to go to a very special guest before he gets angry and hangs up and is tired of... Uh, and uh, wonderful Willie, Bill After. Yeah, that, that, I'm angry, and I can't take it anymore, and I, I don't know how to hang up. Uh, Bruce, when, when you hang up, just tag up. But don't hang up, don't hang up. Bruce Jingles, give Bill After a proper introduction. Bill After, motherfucker! <laughs> yes? Yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was an intro that was, uh, in that was, that was of, um, extremely flattering. Dude, I don't even remember who you're doing the voice of anymore. You've been doing that so long. Now it's the voice of Bruce Jingles. I know. Is that really? Actually, that's the voice I used to do. Snake without a plane, motherfucker. I do a thousand, I do a thousand voices. That was one of them. Oh, my God. Do it again. I can't do it again. That's okay. Uh, what about Arnold? For some life. reason I think about Arnold. Did you see that when Arnold got kicked off the TV show and told a lady to fuck off? No. Oh, the the Gary Coleman? Coleman? Gary Coleman, yes. I, I'm sorry. I'm jump, Jingles was talking about growing up in the hood and it reminded me of different folks. And where's Boner? And uh, anyway, oh, Gary Coleman said, uh, I'm leaving. Fuck off. That was awesome. Well, like, no, I, grew up, I grew up in the hood, too, and I just remember when I was younger, you know, I walked down the hallway and there were guys smoking and the, the black of the jackets and, and, you know, Sorry. really tough looking guys. Those were the teachers. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> the teachers were the, were the criminals. Who stole the fucking dope? That sounds like the old Grand Wizard of Wrestling, in my opinion. The Grand Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> Willie. Um, we had an awesome time hanging out with you at Wrestler Reunion for a couple oh, weeks. That was ago. great. You headbutt me, and I couldn't uh, see for uh, uh, the rest of the day. Uh, I went over, gave uh, RPD a hug, and uh, had him post for a couple of pictures with uh, the Hitman Hart. And then he just came over and he said, "Wonderful, Willie. Good to see you again." And he headbutt me. 
Um, yeah, I, I, wanted to, want, I wanted him to remember me all day. I was afraid if I just said hi and hugged you, you'd... Uh, you'd uh, That's right, Danny. I am, I am, the, I am the only, only person, person in the world that ever got a moonsault from RVD from the top of the Xerox machine. Am I right? Dude, I, I'm sure that that record still holds today, Mr. Mr. You Wonderful were talking Man. About, uh, uh, I, was, I was hanging on and listening about some of your great topics there, and you were talking about people abusing authority. Yes, please contribute to this conversation. And no one knows this story. And I've been oh, my God. This is, a, this is an exclusive right here? It's exclusive. First of all, you will find at wrestling arenas that guards that put the fans in seats abuse authority. Somebody will get up and start walking down to get something, and the guard right over, where are you going? Get back into your seat. That's abuse of authority. But I had it. You know what? Can I add to that? When I was in WWE... When I was in WWE, the security guards would take down all the uh, 420 signs. People would bring RVD 420 signs, and they would go and take them down because they said they were drug references. And I'm not sure whose call that was, but whoever's call that was, I believe, also was a bit abusive on the authority. They would also Boston take them down when you had more uh, posters than other wrestlers, like The Rock or... Triple but that's a control control thing but he's right though when they take it up the initiative you know to say hey you can't get up sit down you know that's that's them feeling like they are mr power and, and i still amazing, have to amazing. agree with you bill on um the security guys at the wrestling places oh man they love to abuse that power hey i'm going to tell you one now that i never told anybody and this wasn't in wrestling when i worked do you remember wow magazine world of wrestling magazine of course Okay, when I worked for WOW Magazine, that company also did teen magazines. And one day, the public told <laughs> me, and he said, We got a job here tonight. It's not wrestling. Here in Chicago, Britney Spears is at a local theater, and we need pictures taken. Would you go? Oh, and you had to go. He said, I said, why not, you know, in entertainment? I said, he said, you can only shoot the first three songs. That's all they let you shoot. Okay, this was during the height of her popularity. So I get to the building, and there's a zillion teeny boppers, and I'm working my way through the crowd, and I finally get backstage, and I have a pass, and this one guard says, oh, go see this guard. So I go see the second guard. He says, who are you? And I said, I'm Bill After. I'm with uh, uh, Teen Beat Magazine. He said, yeah? I said, well, Britney Spears <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? Okay, okay, I need a second. I gotta just laugh on that. I'm Bill After with Team Beat Magazine. <laughs> Team Beat Magazine. So now, so he sends me to this other guard, and the other guard says, "Now I'm gonna sound like Garvini." Dude, he says, "You're supposed to shoot the first three songs." She goes on in 20 minutes. Well, I gotta get you clear. And I said, "Well, they know I'm coming. I have this pass." Yeah. I'm Bill After, motherfucker. What the hell you he said, I don't care who the hell you are. So then somebody comes out, and he knows me from wrestling. And he says, oh, this guy's cool. The guard says, I don't care whether he's cool or not. He's not getting past me. I don't give a fuck what he has to do. So now the time is I hear Britney Spears is being introduced, and I'm saying to this guy, I've got to shoot the first three songs. He says, I don't have clearance from you yet. And I wound up getting out there at the end of her last song and getting like nine shots. And I never saw the guy again. I reported him. But you talk about abuse of authority. Woo! That is an excellent example. Wonderful Willie. Sabu, say hi to, say hi to Wonderful Willie. What's up, Bill? Hey, hey Sabu. Good to hear your voice there. there. How's, How's your poodle? poodle? <laughs> She's good. She's sitting right next to me. All right. All right. Well, I got mine. Mine's over here, too. We had kind of twin poodles for many years, and I lost mine a couple of years ago and uh, found another one at the SDCA, sweetest dog in the whole world. Bill, you know what is another um, abusive authority uh, that we can relate to, those of us who have to travel for work? How about those motherfuckers at the airport, right? I mean, from, from from the people at the counter that sometimes won't give me a boarding, and I'm sure you're probably not late like me. I'm always last minute. Like, if, if you can check in 30 minutes before your flight, I'm always there 31 minutes before. That's You probably can't relate to that. But 
the uh, so many times at the counter they will say, "Oh, I can't even I can't give you a boarding pass. You're not going to make it." And I know I make it because I do it all the time. And then it, sometimes at TSA, but more likely when I'm getting on the airplane, I'll have a bag, and they'll say, oh, that bag's not going to fit. It's too big. I used to have a bag that was just a little bigger than the rest of them, and it would fit, and I would go on 200 flights before somebody would tell me, no, that's above regulation. It's not going to fit. But I would say, let me show you. It will fit. I fly every fucking day with this. But they, oh, they love to have their power. And then and they trap you. When you're on an airplane, you are trapped. You're in a seat. Uh, and then if they if they can get you to put your tray down, so they can give you some stupid peanuts or pretzels or something, uh, then you're just stuck. You can't even reach your own feet. You're just completely stuck, and then they can tell you if you can get up or not to go to the bathroom. I only made this one flight in my whole 35, 40 years of doing this thing. I got to Richmond, Virginia, and there was no one there. I was going through the gate, and then I said, this is back in the days of film. I said, I need the film not to go through x-ray. I need it hand inspected. And the guy said, well, what is the ASA? I said, it's 400. He said, well, it's safe. I said, I don't want to take a chance. He said, okay, when's you playing? I said, 15 minutes. He said, okay, well, hand inspect it. And he handed, hand inspected the 30 rolls of film so slowly that I missed my plane. Right, on purpose, right? Asshole. Abuse of authority. For sure. Role model. Yeah, I did. Who's your who's role model besides me? Bill Sabu is asking uh, um, who your who 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 role model was uh, for you at any point in life. Well, I, I had a few. I had a few of them growing up when I was a little Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen, no, at Clark Kent, a big Smallville fan. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, when I was a little kid. And I was a wrestling fanatic. Buddy Rogers was one of my heroes. But my heroes growing up really were entertainment people. You know my Jerry Lewis thing? Yes, I think I've heard you do his voice once or twice. Oh, Mr. Van Dam, we all just... Anyway, but the character, I used to love his movies. And the cabaret singers. My other genre was cabaret music. I grew up on uh, Andy Williams, Tony Bennett. Uh, Steve Lawrence, those type of singers, and still today I like that. I like to go back and listen to that. So the, a lot of the showbiz people were my role models. Right on, dude. You know who else is a really good role model? Who's that? Booker T. Yes. Booker, what up? What's going on, dog? What's the topic for tonight? We got uh, we got an A and B topic going, and on the lines besides. Besides usual uh, suspects, we got um, Sabu and Jingles and Officer X, and we also got Mr. Wonderful Bill After on the line. Willie After, that's, hey, that's, that's Willie. Look at you, baby. Hey, what's going on, William? Good to hear your voice. You too, man. You too. Hey, man, hey, hey, what's the big topic tonight, man? What are we talking about, man? I want to get All right, in on man. That. Well, we're talking about role models. Uh, believe it or like not. Tiger, like Tiger Woods? Well, I mean, you know, we mentioned Tiger Woods. I mean, you know, I mentioned that at the beginning. This guy uh, is definitely a role model, and that's why people are so affected by what he's done, you know. But on the flip side to that, there's certain um, guys that would want Tiger to be out banging chicks in every town, and that would be a role model for them because they want to live vicariously through, uh, through a, a superstar in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be that might true. true. That, that might be true. true. But uh, uh, those are the guys who really need role models, or the, the, the guys out there, you know, sleeping around and doing all of that. I don't think those guys really need role models, but they may be living vicariously through Tiger Woods as far as wanting to be um, like him in that department. But um, I just don't think that's a, a, a honorable position to be in. Well, no, no, because uh, you and I, uh, we have different values than, than everybody else. Everyone's got their values. But there's a lot of people that don't know me and a lot of people that don't know you that want to live through you. There's a lot of people that would like to imagine um, things that aren't true about me, whether it's whether they want to think that I'm out, um, you know, whoring around or whether they want, they want to think uh, I'm driving a big monster truck or they want to, they think, you know, that I'm hunting and shooting deer or whatever their fantasy is or whatever. You know, none of that is true to, to the real me any more than, you know, sitting down and watching S Sunday football. I just, you know, that's just someone else's dream, not mine. Um, 
But when when you judge role models, you judge them by your own values because you want to know uh, you're going to judge how they serve as a model for others to role, in, in your opinion, in the best way that they could be, which is natural. Who was your, who was your role model? I no, have no. several. That's why I don't understand how Nikki Starr could say she can't come up with one because mine would change a lot. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, when I would like a, a te- I, I think, I think that if that we should define role models as just anybody who serves as an example at any point for others to follow. I mean, it even could, it could be Spider Man. You know, I could I could have got some traits from Spider Man about you know. Um, knowing good from bad or, you know it could have been he-man at one point you know and um it could have been boner hey bill after have you seen boner no no okay um how are you with sitcoms sitcom Maybe. trivia uh fair, uh, fair. okay so four of the old old school stuff back in the six and dice show like like, like three's company, company. Yeah. All right. Well, I just this came up earlier when I was talking to Sonia, uh, and and Boner, of course, was in uh, Growing Pains, not Family Ties, but Growing Pains. He was he wasn't Skippy. He was Boner. But um, in uh, in um, what the fuck was it called? Oh, The Facts of Life. You know, they had like a show when the girls were older, and Mrs. Garrett had like her own place. Was that still Facts of Life, or was that a spinoff from Facts of Life? When they had the Attic Kid, and they were Mrs. Garrett's fucking uh, bistro or something, bakery. Didn't watch it. Didn't watch it. All right, chat room. Hey, you're not even in the chat room, baby. Get, you should get in the chat room. Someone in the chat room tell us that. And also, wasn't, weren't they a spinoff of Demon Strokes? Because Mrs. Garrett used to work for Philip Drummond, and I'm pretty sure it was the same character, but I'm not 100% sure. And then I think she laughed. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. So remember, she had that cafe, and they all used to work there. Was that still Facts of Life, or was it a spinoff with a different name? Mrs. Garrett's Place. That's what I said, Mrs. Garrett's Place. Or, I remember the theme song from Car 54, Where Are You? Um, all right, well, fine. Let's hear it. Okay. Anybody remember it, or just me? Um, I, I can't no. do it with you. Okay, here we go. Where are you? A hold up in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short of child, cruise ships do it idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Yeah. There's nothing like that, Tina Thank you. I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, hang out. Wonderful, Willie. Do you got time to hang out so I can go to the, some phone lines? Sounds, Sounds great. great. All right, cool. If anyone needs to tag uh, Michael Porter, we didn't really get to hear from you. So before I move on, give us uh, give us what you think defines a role model. Uh, first hello, off, I'd like to say Porter. hello to my old friend, Bill After. Hello. Good to see you. Good to hear you. I'm glad to hear that your fortunes are coming back. Yeah, I'm moving to L.A. on April 1st. Lake Arrowhead? Los Angeles? Los Angeles Hollywood? Hollywood? Oh, oh, L.A. I thought it was Lake Arrowhead. Okay, no. good. Okay. Oh, I think he's moving right under the Hollywood sign, like by Griffith Park, which is fucking awesome. I love, it. I love it. Well, uh, from what I understand, uh, where I'm going to be living is within walking distance of uh, Griffith Observatory. Yes, I believe so. You know, which, which, by the way, if I can tie this into our role model conversation, you know, when the movies first came out, and Wonderful Willie, you remember before 1928 when they were silent pictures. Uh, no, I'm not, I don't go back. I have a bad back for getting out of covered wagons, but I'm not that old. Oh, oh, oh okay, my bad. But you, you might have read about it. But when they first came out, nobody knew what to expect from them. They were like a little, they were a distraction. They were like a little con thing, like come in here and drop a nickel in here and crank this up and watch a girl get undressed. And it just developed into this huge thing. Um, and, and at first, the actors were treated like dogs. Nobody wanted them to stay at their hotels or live near them because they were sinners. They would stay up at night, and they would party and have sex and drink and all kinds of really bad stuff. So they were the undesirables. But through the magic of Hollywood and the exposure of these movies, they became like gods, like stars. So automatically, everybody was a role model whether they wanted to be or not. So now you got... Um, Valentino, you know, who was one of the very first, he was a silent film uh, screen 
star, and all of a sudden, bam, everybody wanted to be him. All the guys wanted to be him, and all the women wanted to be fucked by him. And any, anything you read will tell you that that was his position, whether he wanted it or not. You know, whether he was uh, gay in real life or not, and in the, in what he did in real life didn't matter. He was a role model. I think that we de- we define it by... Um, uh, by the consequences of us being. So whether you want to be a role model or not, if someone is uh, is patterning themselves um, after you or learning from you, you know, to, to learn their role, I think that in itself defines you as being a role model. Michael Porter. Yes, role model. Well, uh, I think role models have kind of taken a downturn, especially with, uh, with the Tiger Woods situation and, and so many others. Uh, my role model when I was growing up, I had a couple of them. Uh, they're both uh, gone now. One was uh, New York Yankee great Mickey Mantle. Oh, what an awesome role model! Uh, he was, you know, he was my hero. And also the other one was uh, the late, if he's if he's dead, Elvis Presley. He's why I got into uh, entertainment. You know, I've been singing, you know, since I was a kid, and it was because of Elvis Presley. Uh, some people say that Mickey Mantle uh, kind of fell from his perch as a role model uh, when he, you know, when it came out that he, you know, drank so much and was actually drunk during some of his greatest games. And, of course, uh, when Elvis passed away uh, uh, due to alleged drug use. You know, alleged the, drug use. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, basically, I mean, that goes back to what we're talking about on is it a 24-7 job or um, or is it just, you know, like everybody that's just real people, sometimes um, consequences, uh, you know, like byproducts of their existence serve for others to pattern after. So, therefore, I think everybody is a role model. And basically all we're doing is learning more of the truth about these people when we say that they fell as a role model. We just learn more about the real person. That's what I think. Joseph, thanks for calling RVD Radio, dude. What's up? Hello. Hi, Joseph. Um, I'm a sophomore from Coquette, Michigan. I was wondering if you were okay with me asking a couple questions for a paper. What are you going to ask questions about? Um, I've had uh, what did you say since I was a little kid. Little kid. And I'm doing a paper on this being my career choice and being a pro wrestler. And I have a couple questions I need answered. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really sure if uh, during a live radio show is going to be the uh, the best chance to to really answer questions, and give you time. But uh, why don't you ask two of them, and um, Sabu's going to answer one, and Booker T's going to answer one. Okay, uh, what, you got for what, what perks or benefits go along with this job? Say that again? What perks or benefits go along with this job? The job of being a pro wrestler? Yeah. Okay, Sabu, you want to tackle that one? Oh, I don't see him out here. I think he got hung up on. He gets hung up on, like, uh, about three or four times every week. Booker T. Oh, is Booker on? Okay. Hey, yeah, Booker, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, handle that one and, uh, and tell Joseph what personal yeah. benefits go along with your job? Um, I mean, of course, the uh, the women, you know, the money, you know, the drugs. <laughs> Whatever you want, man. You know, when you're a wrestler, you're like a rock star, man. So everything comes along with the deal. That's a great answer. Right. It's true. The money, the women, the drugs, all that. <laughs> <laughs> At church on Sunday. Yeah. And, of course, you get to travel around the world. You know, throw that in there. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Joseph, you got another question? Uh, what advice would you give to someone planning on trying to get into this line of work? Um... Advice I would give someone trying to get into uh, a career of pro wrestling illustrated would be to know that you're swimming upstream, going going against the odds. If you're trying to make it to the top of your field, you've got millions of people uh, that would like very much to be a superstar just like you. So do it out of love, and uh, if you ain't scared to go for it because you love it enough to try that hard, um, then, then you're going in, in with, with the right mindset. Are you looking at me like you want to say something? 
just that this guy's abusing his power as a listener by doing an interview on your radio show. Oh, abusing his power. Well, I said it was okay, but uh, anyway, let's go to this guy. Say hi, baby, to Mr. Bobby B. Hey, Bobby B. I missed you, and I missed that big fat thing you had at my house. Whoa, wait a sec. That could be taken out of context. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, it was it was nothing like that. Uh-huh. Penis breath. Bobby B was abusing his authority, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff, no doubt about it. That was good. She was referring to a uh, a, a half ounce rolled up into one doobie that uh, we have pictures of as evidence. It was a baseball bat. Whatever Bobby B, how are you doing tonight? About yourself. Pretty good, buddy. Doing really good. And uh, what I'm what I'm worried about on me is on that authority thing and if Officer X is there. How come I'm uh, 60 years old and I've seen? Because you were born 60 years ago. I know that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful, Willie. Give me a drum roll. I'm sorry, Bobby B. How about that egg roll? <laughs> An egg roll. I'm sorry. Uh, please, please continue. I won't break your concentration. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Never. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Here's Dale. Oh, okay. Now I guess I've been around for 60 years, and I've seen at least 30 shootings up here in Portland where uh, cops cop shot suspects. Wait, you're blind. You didn't see 60 shooting. I, 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 well, I got it within my, my degrees, and I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Okay. Yeah, he well, said shooting, and right away I thought, like, who were the two wrestlers shooting? Ha-ha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, please. Thank you. Why is it that uh, in every case the, the officers have never been uh, found guilty that all they have to say is, I was in fear for my life? And I've seen guys get shot that were, uh, they were naked and half burned. There was guys with uh, knives, and it could have been handled in different different ways. But the top team, they got to uh, shoot the guy dead, and they like you do it one time. They repeatedly shoot him. And I just cannot understand why. And how, many, how many was black? There is no black and poor white. Oh, don't forget the beaners. And I just wonder why is that I've never seen uh, an officer ever uh, get prosecuted for it. Oh, it happens. No, no, I've never seen it, I'm, but I'm only 60. But, Bobby, the threshold for that is you, if you're in fear of your life, or if you're in life of someone else, you can use shoot to stop. Right, right. And, that's all they, and that's all they have to say, though. I can't say right. that. I tell you, you can't a, knife, a gun to a knife fight. Don't tase me, bro. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I think that the cops have a hell of a position to be in because <laughs> they pull over people that shoot at them, <laughs> people that want to kill them. I see it on TV all the time, you know. And, and even when, I, when a car, instead of pulling over, when the car takes off, that is abusing the authority you'll kill, of you'll kill having a driver's license or even having a car because a lot of times they don't have a license. But anyway, when they nobody run from the cops. Nobody ever gets shot. Who pulls over, hands over the license and registration and puts their hands in the steering wheel. I guarantee no one's ever been shot for doing that. Well, we've had a couple of cases up here in Portland that are very close to exactly that. And... Uh, just, they, they, they may, maybe later on, but the initial prosecution, they, they, they never, you know, face what I think, you know, you know I, that's just what I've seen. I mean, that's, that's my experiences in life, and, and that kind of fears, I think that's kind of an abuse of power. Look at, look at the cops from New York City. They get prosecuted all the time for shootings. It's getting to the point where they can't get anybody to take that job on account of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I can understand that, too, but... But I've still never seen it where, you know, I mean, it's like it's blatant. You got it on videotape and everything where cops are abusing their power. And I've had ex- I've got friends that are ex-cops, and, and they tell me about times that they've abused their, their, their authority. Officer you know, X, you've seen the footage of Rodney King. Was that excessive force, or was Rodney still trying to get up and, and not cooperating enough to the point where it, where it warranted that? In your, in your professional opinion. Mm-hmm. In my pro- I wasn't there. Oh, come on. You saw it. We all saw it, man. Billy B. saw it from Mississippi. Bobby B. seen it, and he's fine. All right. 
Billy B. Hey, hey, hey RVD, I got to head off to here. I don't want to interrupt the conversation, but I got to head off to here. Wonderful, Willie. Thank you so much for being on the show and adding your years. Good night, good night, all my friends there and everybody listening. And uh, uh, let me you know. Let me know if I got over so you can rebook me here. Hey, let me ask you something, Wonderful Willie. Do you got anything you want to plug? Hey, OneWrestling.com. I'm on there 9,000 times a day. And, uh, a lot of times. In from, if you're listening in from England, Fighting Spirit Magazine. And if you're listening in for Ireland, like Eric. Uh, yeah, from Ireland. It's sold there, too. And if you're listening in from Italy, Tutto Wrestling a Magazine. I'll check it out. Um, yeah. Right on. yeah. All right, cool. Have a good night, wonderful Willie. Thanks for calling Thank in. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. What a swell guy, yeah. wonderful Willie is. So Bobby, or, or we just went to Billy B from Mississippi, and I know he had something that we don't want to miss. Go on with the Billy B. Oh, the greatest theme song ever is uh, Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> the greatest theme song is Dukes of Hazard. Did you see them redo that on Family Guy? That was pretty funny. Yes, yes, very funny. Yes. Do you hear that echo? Uh, I do not. <laughs> Is everybody else here an echo? Echo. Yeah, echo. Callers. Is it, uh, is it like Echo on Lost, the uh, uh, that character that was Adebisi on Oz? Because I liked him. I liked him better as Adebisi than Echo, but Echo was cool, too. I don't, I don't know. watch the show. So. All right, cool. Well, you quit watching uh, Dukes of Hazard. That one's out. Um, how about uh, Abuse of Authority, Billy B.? We're talking about that. Can you think of an example in your life you can share with us where you run into that? Oh uh, yes, and it always involves drugs. Always involves what? Drugs. How so? Uh, the way it affects people. It gives them uh what, delusions of authority? Absolutely. All right, man. I can't keep filling in the blanks for you. You're blowing me up. <laughs> all right. Oh my mind, I don't care about all that. What, what? Wrong side of town. All right, Billy B. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I haven't mentioned, by the way, my movie, Wrong Side of Town, came out yesterday. And if you go right now to WWE.com, you won't see it. Look, they just changed it. No, you will see it. Go to WWE.com right now. The uh, the front page, uh, the wallpaper is actually uh, Wrong Side of Town. And it has uh, the the star Batista and uh, and and the artwork from the from the cover and all that. So that came out yesterday on DVD. You can get it Netflix and Blockbuster and everywhere that has crazy silly movies like that. So so yay, Rock Side of Town, motherfucker. And, well, if you're uh, listening, you can. To, listen, Nikki Heyman, she's gonna. I know she's gonna come through for me and have my back. Is Nikki Star crazy for saying she couldn't think of one role model she had as a kid? Yeah. yeah. Nikki Heyman, you're on. Yeah, I know. I'm on. I'm trying to think of a good answer to this question, and I'm echoing crazy. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you echoing. I couldn't hear me echoing or the guy from Lost, that'd be easy echoing, but I hear you. Okay, is that better? Way better. Okay. Nikki Heyman, motherfucker. Did Bruce Jingles powder? He probably left. Yeah, he left a long time ago. Instead of saying goodbye, he doesn't want us to know he left, so he just uh, All right. Nick, he can give you a goodbye, motherfucker. Um, I know. All right. Let's see. Well, come on, Nicky. You knew I was going to come on to you. Or I was going to, you were going to be under the air. Come on. You knew I was going to be coming to you. My well, I knew, I knew you were going to get to me eventually. Um, if Nikki Stark couldn't come up with somebody immediately... I can't how can blame that her. be, though? I mean, how can, like, when you're a kid, it seems like, Booker, help, book, help me understand this, because I seriously, I don't, Nikki Heyman and Sonya kind of uh, agreed, they can't think of anybody that was a role model. I mean, it seems like whether it's an older brother, your mom, a teacher, um, Wonder Woman, someone you watch on TV, or... No, hang on, don't put words in my mouth. No, I haven't. I've just said it's, no, I'm sorry, Nikki Starr had said this. And, uh, and and my wife agreed that she thought also she thinks it's different for girls than it is for guys because I think they're crazy. They're just they're not understanding the question if they can't think of one person. And I was just asking Booker to help me understand that. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, really, you know, because you didn't, 
getting kind of, you know, uh, for, for myself, you've kind of mixed up what, what the real role model is, you know, because you're saying, um, you know, uh, porn stars to be role models, uh, you know, certain people doing a lot of bad things to be role models. Uh, for myself, I think role models are something that's for kids to look up to, to, to inspire to want to be. So uh, it's kind of hard, you know, as far as how should I answer that question. Huh. Maybe what you're saying about Barbies? Oh, um, people that grew up in my, women that grew up around the time I did, they were shoving Barbie down our throat, and you guys were getting, like, you know, superheroes. So yeah. there's a little difference there. So they were kind of teaching us to grow up and have big boobs and try and be really skinny and dress like sluts. Wow, and, and and maybe they weren't really like tapping into your fantasy imagination like like guys. Like. Right, exactly. Yeah, that yeah, didn't that work didn't for me either. either. Huh? Yeah, you had Paul Heyman as a role model, huh, Nikki? <laughs> well, it taught me to be very responsible financially. Hmm. All right. How about like going by what Booker said? What about kids that make bad decisions? And they end up being um, whatever, you know, being uh, crooks or, or being in, they end up in jail. They end up uh, on that side of the coin. But but they can think of people they patterned after, you whether it was getting in with the wrong crowd or whatever. Um, aren't those people that brought them that way role models? I mean, they're not good ones, but they're still role models, aren't they? They qualify as role models because somebody's following them. I mean. Uh, but it, as you said, everybody's got their own um, criteria for a role model. Right, but, uh, okay, exactly. On, on what they want a role model to be, but they can't really have their own criteria um, that's not consistent with the definition of a role model. I think they only have their own opinion of whether it's a good one or a bad one or whether it qualifies as one they approve of, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Who was your role model, Nikki? Surprisingly, it wasn't my dear, dear uncle. It was my parents. My father was very successful. Um, my mother, I wish she had been more successful, but she was at least honest with herself. She wanted to be a nurse, but her math and science skills were, were not as strong. So she, she wasn't even allowed to go to college, so she did what... She was told to do settle in and raise family. I don't follow that pattern. I'm not trying to be successful. Since, you know, I was allowed to go to college, I finished college. Right. Well, okay. All right. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Yeah, Book. Hey, don't you think um, before the Tiger Woods scandal, people looked at Tiger Woods like he was a role model? Absolutely. Do you yeah, think yeah. they look at them like that now? Um, I I do, and I think that's kind of the point I'm making is whether he's a good good or bad role model, he's still in a position where people are going to uh, look to him, you know, for uh, you know for modeling their their roles. So so I think for sure there's no question about it. Okay, and well, I think well, I think actually anybody really that has kids, you know, that says, "Oh, I'm no role model." I think that they're kidding themselves because at that point, their whole job is to structure their kids' lives and 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 situate everything so their kids can learn to grow up a certain way. It, that's exactly, I think, what a what a role model is to to me. I, I mean, I, I understand that, but why um, why would his sponsors drop him if he was such a good role model? Right. That's where I think the good or bad comes in. Although he's still a role model, I think they think he's a bad role model, and that people will learn to be like him in a bad way. I think I think the I think the term role model was was um, pretty much um, you know put in form for people that's doing good things, not people that's doing bad things. I don't think people that's doing bad things are role models. They're just people that people you know want to be like, kind of like yeah, the NWO. Well, and, so okay, instead of role so, model, you want to call those guys examples? Say what? Instead of calling the, the, the bad, ones that bad aren't examples. giving the good image, instead of calling them role models, just calling them examples. Exactly, exactly my point. Okay. Okay, okay. I see your point. I'm not sure if I agree by definition, but I, I understand what you're saying for sure. 
and and why you're saying that just i think you know like for instance if the family next door if they really believe in satanism and they think that the leader of the satanic cult is is a good role model for them although although i'm going to feel like that guy's not a good role model that's my opinion but to them he is he's a perfect role model for them so i think either way the guy is a role model it's just that he's a bad role model that's that's just the way i see it but i think that's just in a terminology, because I totally get what you're saying. You're saying we use the word uh, in a positive way. So um, I'm going to go to this guy, Lenny, who's been waiting forever. Lenny, thanks for calling in to RVD Radio. Well, what's Dude. up, bro? How are you, man? It's all good. Chilling the book. It's all good here, too. What's up, Booker? What's going on, dog? Hey, is it true you having twins? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, oh, congratulations. Congratulations, yeah, bro. Booker T. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it up. Hell yeah, man, I'm potent, man, I'm potent, man, man, you know. (laughs) Hell yeah, there's the proof. The proof is in the pudding. (laughs) Ooh. Gross. (laughs) Right on. All right, so listen, Lenny, uh, I know you've been listening to the whole show, so you know what we want to know. What my role models are? Sure. Yeah, um, starting off right now is like you and Sabu because you're giving time for us. To listen to your radio show, ask some questions. That's really cool of you guys. So yeah, you guys are my role model. Yeah, well, I think I think you could do worse. And uh, obviously, obviously, uh, being in the position that that we're in, we know that people consider us role models. So so I'm very conscious about the public image uh, that I put out. You know, and obviously, doing a radio show, everything I say uh, is is public because it's going out there but uh as loose-lipped as i may uh, appear it's still i'm very cautious of you know w- what i say and what i won't because i know that so many people are listening and you know um there is there's a private side uh there's a private booker t there's a private rvd uh i'm not saying that they were much of uh characters but but i am saying you know that uh we that we feel the responsibility of of, of people wanting to wanting to uh to look up to us, right, Book? Definitely, definitely. And, and if, if I could say, you know, uh, you know, Rob Van Dam, I could actually say Rob Van Dam is a role model. Um, maybe not the typical role model for, for everyone, every little kid, but I think Rob Van Dam is a role model. I've been around Rob Van Dam. I know I respect his wife and his family and his family values and whatnot, you know, and um, I think that's what really makes up a role model. Nice. Well put. Rob. I think Book's a good role model too. So, so uh, I right, got one well, more. Right. I'm sharing the love here tonight. Yeah. Hey Rob, <laughs> I kind of got one more. This is kind of like shocking, but like Chris Benoit was. Of shocking. Chris Benoit is also a role model for me too. Even after that, you know, like what happened and stuff. But like, besides the fact he did that, he's still a role model to me because he never gave up on what he wanted to do. He just kept going for what he was going for. Um, so how do you, from your perspective, how do you feel about what happened at the end there? Well, I feel like he didn't really do it, though. I think, like, he's being framed. You might he think he's a little crazy, but I'm thinking Kevin Sullivan did it. Because, you know, the whole thing with his wife and right, et cetera. But, like, I don't think he did it, though. Book says he did it. Um... I, I'm I, I'm with you though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to find out someday that the whole thing was bullshit because I could never wrap my head around the guy that I knew um, capable of, of doing that. You know, so I'm interested to hear your take since you're throwing his name out of the table as a role model. You know, because um, like Aaron, who's still on the line, thanks for hanging out here the whole time from Ireland. He said he said. Aaron, you said something in your email, uh, not an email, but the, the actual fan mail that you handed me, you said something in there that stuck out in my mind about, um, you know, about how open I am about about uh, marijuana and not just on educating yeah. on medical marijuana, but also I joke about it usage recreationally and such. And he said something in his letter about how, uh, we have, he said, he compared it to rap music, where um, he said for rap music we have to uh, we have to look up to them and appreciate them for their talents and for their arts, not for uh, not for certain things that they do. Is that is that how it was, Aaron? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, people like Tiger Woods, for example, I don't think that his legacy that he's built on his golfing career should be tarnished by what's going on in his personal life. I don't think they should bring in Tiger Woods' personal life and make him out, you know, take away all the things he's done for golf in general just because of something that's happened outside of the court. You know what I'm saying? I do, absolutely. And that's something that my mom's been saying for years is that um, our media has been, it's just getting worse and out of control as far as how much they're intruding on people's personal lives. Exactly. Yes, we be, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get one of those. The more TMZ takes over, the more out of control it gets. I mean, they can make up a story <sighs> and put it into news. Yeah. yeah. It didn't used to be like that. I mean, talking heads, I think, are more are hurting us more than they're helping us. And nine times out of ten, the public will believe it. Oh, absolutely, because they saw it on the TV. Exactly, because they saw it on the 9 o'clock news from some guy in a suit, and they'll exactly. believe it. <laughs> right, no doubt about it. But, but Aaron, you, I think, you know, that you do probably understand the reason why uh, Tiger Woods, as being in the position of a role model, uh, and, and being such a public image, you know, to where his image is worth millions and millions of dollars, that any anything anything that's inconsistent with any sponsor's um, preference of his image could, will cause problems. I mean, you understand that, right? Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, if I was a golf player and I was looking up to Tiger Woods, and this whole incident happened, I would still be a big time, like, I think that people have role models so they can strive to be like them in a career. You said yourself you had uh, role models whenever you were going out to be a wrestler, and uh, I think people look up to Tiger Woods who are trying to be professional golfers, and because of this incident, I don't think that those people will be taken away from Tiger Woods as their role models, because they want to be like Tiger Woods on the court, not in their personal life. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh... I agree with that totally. Um, it's just the fact that since he's such a public figure and a celebrity, the celebrity crosses all bounds because now he's not just a golfer, but he's somebody you know that's on TV or or you know he's the richest uh, uh, athlete ever or or a successful black man or you know whatever angle you want to take it. He represents so much to to so many people um, and. And being a public image, I mean, you and a celebrity across all those borders. And then when you're talking about money and endorsements, there's some serious stipulations there. Um, I mentioned before I, I have a contract for a uh, for an uh, an action figure, and in the contract it says in there that if if I associate myself with manufacturers or distributors of tobacco or alcohol, they can void my contract. Which I just thought was hilarious, but I but I see where you know if you're paying somebody millions of dollars uh, to use their image, you're going to want to protect your investment. Well, yeah, I suppose that is a valid, a very good point. Yeah, I noticed that you said alcohol and tobacco. I think it's the thing, guys, that you that that everybody's kind of like looking over is is, is family values. You know, presidents run on family values. You know, how many presidents you know that that then become presidents that's not married and have that stable background and that stable lifestyle? And I think that's exactly what's um, going on with Tiger Woods. He ran, you know, his whole campaign on family values and how good of a guy he really was when he really wasn't. Right, and then you're a hypocrite, and I love it when hypocrites get busted, you know, whether it's TMZ, the Inquirer, or actual investigators. I love when hypocrites get busted that actually stand on a platform of something and persecute and judge other people on something, you know, when it's the exact same shit that they do. I love it when they get busted. That's why I'm thankful exactly for the security cameras everywhere. Hell yeah, and you know uh, if you're if you're having an affair uh, and you're a regular guy, you, however whatever your penalties are, you know a broken up family, uh, um, all the shit that goes along with that, you have that. But when you're a celebrity, then you have an extra penalty on top of that because now you're famous. So instead of just you know you and your fucked up family trying to work things out, you know now boom your image is everywhere, and now you gotta apologize and kiss the public's ass too. So that's part of that too. Um, we have a, we started something that's a, a photo caption contest at robvandam.com. So go check it out. We put a new photo up today, um, 
and uh, and it's a photo caption contest. Uh, just send the forums at robvandam.com, and we're going to give away the new robvandam.com T-shirt to the winner. Sonia, you're going to help me. Uh, you're going to pick out a winner. You're going to pick out a winner. Actually, you could do that now. But I'm going to pick out a winner uh, from from the last contest, and, and I just posted Hello. one up before the show. So, so I want to get that going too, and I also want to go to John, who's calling in from Rhode Island. Thanks for calling RVD Radio, John. All right, thanks for having me. Right on, dude. So uh, you've been listening for a while. We're talking about role models and uh, you know what what it takes to 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 be a role model. I mean, in your opinion, what can you add to this conversation? Um, well, obviously, like, uh, to be a role model, like, someone, someone I was looking up to, so, uh, obviously you have to be, in your, in someone else's eyes, you know, you have to be doing, you know, something pretty important or, or something good, so, I mean, I mean, if you'd be in that position in the first place, but, um, so you pretty much are going along with, uh, with what Booker was saying, and a role model is someone that serves as a good cause, and, and that's, that's what, that's what the meaning means to you, huh? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, you know, I'm um, someone that either, like, to help you, like, maybe you how you, a guideline for your life, or, right. or like, something like that. I agree with that, I agree with that. Who was a good role model for you? Um, like, I had many when I was growing up, like, my father when I was younger, uh, like, a, a lot of pro athletes, uh, like, uh, Wayne Gretzky, Dan Marino, like, guys like that. So, guys, guys who didn't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. right, well, uh, John, it's got to be cold as fuck in Rhode Island, right? Uh, what was that? Is it cold in Rhode Island? Oh, yeah, very, very cold. cold. Very. Uh, yeah, actually, actually, finally, uh, just, just got, got the, the snow off the ground, off the ground but uh, uh, the temperature's uh, still uh, still down here. <laughs> and then I, I work yeah, at I work 4 in the morning, morning, so it's usually below uh, uh, 20, 20 degrees, degrees or so around then. then. Okay, we're right. All right, um, so uh, another thing we're talking about is abuse of power. And um, I thought people would uh, really be able to automatically uh, come up with a bunch of stories like this. I mean, from from, Rich, from Nixon, Richard Nixon, and the big uh, Waterhouse, wa- not wa- Watergate scandal, that's an abuse of power. We had his guys investigate uh, the records, uh, you know, in, in, the other, in the other building and shit. That's, that's the kind of shit they could do, abuse of power. Let's talk about, uh, how about the government abuse? using their power and fucking you know what was on the news the other day teachers were spying on kids uh by loaning them laptops that had hidden cameras in them and they were spying on the kids when they were at home to try to gather information from them about drugs and shit like that that that's a bit abusive uh i mean there should be there should be consequences to that in my opinion yeah i agree but that story has yet to be determined, and I think that's the case of a talking head taking a story, a piece of a story, and running with it. But as far as, like, government and abuse of power, um, if you're going to talk about that, like, what about the stuff going on with Toyota? Our government knew there was something wrong with that, and they did nothing for years? Or we didn't even talk about this. What about that doctor in Delaware, that pediatrician that has abused, like, 103 children, some of them as young as three months old? I mean, that is a real abuse of power. Yeah, we lost Officer X somewhere along the lines. I really want to get his opinion on this because I love to talk about pedophiles uh, with with Officer X. But, yeah, this guy, Dr. Bradley, uh, 103 kids, they say, he molested. And he has over 13 hours of videotape of him and his kids. Um, yeah, that is serious abuse. Of, of power because trust the doctor. I mean, you trust the doctor with everything. You say, "Go ahead and put me under. I'm going to be a body in your in your hands with no right to protect myself whatsoever." That's. I mean, that you are seriously uh, succumbing to uh, submission at that point, and you trust that fucking doctor with everything he says. Fuck, he sticks his finger up your ass, you know, and <laughs> and he did it to these kids. He stuck his finger up these kids' ass, and they did it in a sexual way. This guy's a monster, and and yeah, the parents would actually be right there with him sometimes, and they say he, they would, he would take the kid and say, "Here, we're gonna go um, in this other room. I'm gonna get a band aid or a fucking lollipop," and then he would molest him right there. And the parents trusting the authority because it's a doctor. And here's where it gets scary, Rob. A lot of the medical professions. 
police themselves. A lot of them what? They, a lot of a, a lot of the different medical groups um, police themselves. Um, oh right. We ran into a we ran into a lot of this back in Florida. Um, my mother used to be a secretary for an oral surgeon, and he and his buddies would typically protect each other whenever something would come up. If it turned into a malpractice suit, um, if somebody was abusing their privilege or charging extra or whatever, it would all get swept, swept under the rug. Yeah, I have. I do not have our time believing that at all, and uh, and that's scary. You know, like if there was a TV special that was all the highlights of all the video footage they had of hospitals fucking up and stuff, we'd all be too scared to go to a hospital. I've seen a lot of shit. Seen a oh, lot yeah. of shit. Saw something recently where somebody went in to get one foot operated on and they they took off the other foot. I think. I mean, we've all heard of that is urban myth or whatever. But I saw that on the news the other day. I just, I'm not surprised. Hey, are we um, echoing? I, I hear an echo now. I didn't hear it before. Do you hear hey, it? Hey, my phone. Hey, Rob. Rob, my phone's about to cut out, man. And I'm about to get up out of here, bro. All right, bro. Thanks for calling in, man. Thank you, bro. 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 Holla, holla, holla. Holla. Right. Uh, congratulations on the kids. Appreciate it, bro. Later. Later. Yeah. So, so Booker T is going to be a role model for those kids, you know, because <clears throat> you look up to your daddy. If he's around, you look up to your mommy. And, uh, you know, I mean, you try to shit when you're that age. You're, it's monkey see, monkey do, you know. So everything they do is serving as a role model, in my opinion, whether it's good or bad. If they pick up bad habits. I think that's still modeling after their role, you know. Um, did you guys hear about this shit, this Dr. Bradley? What a, a sick motherfucker. So, yeah, he's in the news. And uh, what else did you say? That- well, I have an issue with the whole Toyota thing going on because if uh, if our safety, Highway Safety Administration people knew that there was an issue and it wasn't floor mats, I mean, I kind of like lack of – Taking action is, in a way, abuse of power if you are of that level where you can take action and stop any more cars being made. I mean, they knew about it for at least two years before they even thought about doing anything about it. I mean, there's, yeah, but, there's a guy that served – he's still in prison. He's been there for eight years because he got charged with vehicular man, uh, manslaughter because there was an accident where people were killed, and he said, and he'll still say to this day, that he thinks it was a malfunction with the accelerator, but he got charged. The, the jury didn't believe him, so they sent him to prison. Guess what? He was in a Toyota Camry. And the, the trick is that when they, um, if, if you realize how much it was going to cost them to do the full recall, I'm not, I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that when they saw this problem, they're like, ooh. You realize how much this is going to cost us in bad press, in the recall itself, replacing the parts. You know, they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to stir up trouble. It's, you know, it's scary how much inaction happens. It was definitely, you know, a, uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a well-thought-out decision. You know, they had all that, and they weighed it out and decided to take the risk, and oops. Looks like uh, they fucked up. Oh, I was just about to go to Harry's flash, and then he... Mickey wants to be unmuted. And then he hung up. She does? Yeah. We just lost uh, Harry's flash, and I was just going to go to him. Hey, yeah. He will? Okay. All right, Nikki Starr, what's going on? The biggest abuse of there power is, is the government. Hey, flash, hold on. We'll get to you. Okay. Hey, I'm sorry. Harry hung up, and now he's back, or he got hung up on him. Boom. Okay, so wait, Nikki Star, the biggest abuse of power is the government. For sure. Give examples. The drug administration. Okay, well, hey. Yeah. The lobbyists, Congress. Oh, the president. I'm serious. For sure. They, they have care. They don't care about us. No, I mean, I, you're, you're right. That is the biggest. There's no bigger abuse uh, of power. Although Putting people in jail, um, that's, a, that's a pretty big thing. To be locked in a cage, I think that would suck really, really bad. I think it would be like a form of torture, being locked in a cage. Like you do in jail. 
it's a serious abuse uh, to put people in jail that don't deserve to go in there, you know, yeah. because because the laws that they make that say, uh, obey us, obey us, or this is your penalty, yes. With you one billion percent, Nikki Starr, RVD Radio producer. You're going to pick up Harry, right? Yes. Go take care of him. All right. Just Nikki get him Starr's got to go back on there. Yeah. Um, when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to abuse. Uh, hey, can you hear me? What was that? Yep. yep. Okay, I muted myself. That was awesome. I'm going to try and call uh, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you I'm permission to hit the button, Rob. You know. Oh, no. That sucks. Hold on. I'm going to let Harry Slash in here. Hi, Harry Slash. Thanks for calling my RVD Radio tonight. How are you? We love you. What's going on, dude? What's happening? You circumcised me on the air a couple of times. Dude, Sabu gets cut off, he said, like three or four times every uh, every week and keeps calling back. And that's just the characteristic of the show. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy hey, like as far that. as biggest abuse of power, man, I'd have to say anything in religion. Ooh, well... But, okay, since you bring that up, what gives them their power except for us and our gullibility? Well, here's the thing. You entr- these are people that you entrust with your soul, which is a little heavier than the doctor that you entrust with your body. And you end up trusting religious heads, you know, priests, people like that, more than you do a doctor. Because a doctor, you're, you're figuring, okay, it's physical, but a priest is spiritual. So he never leads you down the wrong path. I'm wait no I I totally get that. I mean if you're you're trusting eternity uh, cuz this guy is telling you that he's got the the key to eternal happiness. That's a yep. that's, that's a lot of power. And they mm-hmm. abuse that by saying God wants you to drop your shorts, right? <laughs> well they do sometimes. <laughs> if you're a hot 12-year-old boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, who's calling who? <laughs> yeah, if you're a hot 12-year-old you boy. You calling, Rob? <laughs> uh, I am trying to call my friend, Mr. Justin McCauley. Oh, cool. And I do not know if he will pick up or not. Not looking good. Could still happen. It could still happen. Did it happen? Hello? There's nothing. Dude, there's nothing. Okay, that's creepy. No, he's not muted. No, yeah, it was him, baby, but it wasn't muted. When it's muted, it has one of these. All right, all right. So, uh, Harry Slash, we had wonderful Willie After on the show earlier today. Who? I'm sorry? (laughs) Bill After was on the show. I also heard Andre the Giant called him the other week. Um, No. Oh, okay. I guess that was just an internet rumor. Yeah, things get things get blown out of out of proportion. Hey, back to the definition of role model. In the old days, in the old school days, a role model was somebody knew, that knew to always kayfabe in public. You know, keep everything out of the public eye, including alcohol and cigarettes. And you go back to the days of Bruno San Martino; he wouldn't even drink a glass of wine in public. Right. So, so basically. Uh, a role model would, is something like that you punch in and punch out then from that perspective. Like like you uh, you go out in public and it's like you're going to work. You're putting on your, your role model hat because people can see you and you take your hat, your role model hat off when you're, when you're at home. Yeah, when you become a public figure, you pretty much give up the right to be a degenerate in public. Interesting. See, a lot of a lot of celebrities, I think, don't know about that part, and then they're not considered good role models. Well, that to each their own, man. If if somebody wants to get on the cover of Wheaties and you know be a serial spokesman and stuff like that, and have little kids grow up and inspire to be him, they got to put on a game face. Because you can go back to the oldest you know role models that we had in pop culture icons, and deep down they all had their skeletons in the closet, but they kept them in the closet. Right. Well, did they keep them in the closet, or was it just that media was not as intrusive then as they are now, which is my take on it? You want to get even heavier, Hollywood was more mobstered up, and they kept things in the closet. 
You know, Rob, you know this from all the Hollywood history of all the cover-ups and scandals, and that just that was to keep people in the public perspective as role models, as as baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, clean, white bread America. Well, that's, I mean, in the same school of thought, you know, when I was in WCW in the early 90s, like 92, uh, uh, the baby faces, well, actually all the wrestlers, but we weren't allowed to have girlfriends or wives anywhere near the arena for the same reason, because they wanted to protect the uh, money-making image, just like the old um, Hollywood studio moguls, you know, same. Well, back, back in the day, they made actors, you know, keep their marriages a secret. You know, bands too. You know, have, you know they they kayfabe being married because you you want the the public to think that you're attainable. That was the same thinking that they had in WCW back then. Right. So, but basically, that's the same uh, for trying to protect the image of a role model. It's basically uh, it's basically the same uh, same thing. You know, only only letting. Well, it's like spoon feeding information, only letting out the information uh, that that you want out, so that people would judge by their own. Because people judge by by their own values, you know. Yeah. So that's that's what it, that's what it all always comes down to. Well, it also comes down to like, what is the role model you're looking for? Are you looking to be, you know, Mr. All America? Are you looking to be successful in a certain field? You know, case in point, if, you, if you, in the music industry, you're going to look up to a role model, find me a straight musician, I'll find you somebody that's still playing in a bar. Right, but who who would you say was a, a role model for you? Well, a role model or inspiration, which because there's two different things. As far as music, I was inspired by Jimmy Page and Bob Marley. Okay, and neither of them are clean cut, uh, middle of the road, you know, generic, whatever. And you think that's necessary to be a role model? No, I don't. Okay, a person, I guess when I was really young, my role models may have been Bruno Sammartino and George Reeves as Superman. I didn't know he, he killed himself. Well, he might not have. We don't yeah, know. This is, I know, I saw the movie too. <laughs> I saw the house. You can see it on RVD TV, uh, Comic Geeks episode. Uh, no, actually, I took that episode down. I got to fix it and put it back up because they never, they left out um, City Hall. But anyway, no, they left out the uh, train station, so I had to put that back in. Union Station. Anyway, um, okay, I hear you, but I'm not so sure. Like when you say they were an inspiration, but they did not serve as a as a role model for you, then um, you know that brings some questions. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. You can be inspired by somebody without really necessarily wanting to uh, use them. Yeah. Use them to create you, but I think you kind of do. What you're saying, but what I'm trying to say is like you can be inspired by someone to, to achieve great. Bonzi speaking. Hey, hey Daddy. Daddy. Bonzi. Bonzi, Daddy. Daddy. Daddy, motherfucker. Hey, we're calling you from the radio show. Bonzi, motherfucker. Hey, Bonzi. We, Daddy. You know what? I'm having such a fucking good time in Tampa Bay. I almost forgot about RVD Radio, and that's the first time for everything. Fuck. <laughs> That's right, Daddy. We wait. What's the subject? Hey, for, first of all, I want to say my uh, uh, baby Fonzie. My daughter's having baby Fonzie in six days, and I'm so excited about it. And uh, I, I can't, I can't believe it. You know, everything is. Uh, we're all waiting here in Tampa Bay for little Fonzie to come. It's a big moment in my life. We grandfather Fonzie. I'm super happy. And uh, I'm so grateful that you guys called me. Hello to the Indian Princess and all the RVD radio listening uh, people. Uh, Fonzie says, uh, right on, Daddy, 420, when he can. What's that, Fonzie, Daddy? Hey, Indian. Hey, yeah, so congratulations on that, Fonzie, Daddy. Harry, uh, sorry we cut you off. It was just the timing of the uh, phone call. But, um, but uh but yeah, all right, Daddy. Well, uh, we got to hold of you before the end of the show, and uh, we'll have you kick in on the uh, uh, topic. Two topics we're talking about tonight, Fonzie. The show went by pretty quick. One of them we're talking about is role models. What does it take to define or to be a role model? Um, some people think a role model is, is only something you use to represent good. Uh, if they're if, if they don't represent a good image, 
uh, in their values, then it's not a role model. I think they're still a role model if anybody uses them, uh, is inspired, you know, to, to follow them in certain ways. And Harry Slash was just trying to explain to me the difference between an inspiration and a role model. Exactly. I, I'm kind of thinking the same way. Uh, it's not necessarily a good thing, but that's good for kids to have a, a, a practical role model and kind of goodness. But uh, my role model, I, I like Bonnie and Clyde when I was a kid. So, you know, it was a role model. I didn't want to grow up to be like them, but I, I sure did like them and admired them. But, and they were the worst of the worst, robbing banks and shooting people. Right. Did you like Natural Born Killers? Yes. Yeah, that was, was kind, exciting. Of, kind of done in the sa- in the same vein, kind of. But uh, yeah, um, so you know, we were relating that, you know, to to us. And for me, you know, I think that like uh, I've always been like attracted to characters. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my friends are characters. Uh, people in the wrestling business are characters. Uh, but my brother made that distinction with me because I was saying, why are all my friends crazy? And he said, well, you're, you're drawn towards characters. You know, you've always liked comic books because the characters and heroes and action stars and movie stars, they're, they're all characters. Like, and I was like, wow, he's right. Like, for me, I've always been drawn towards that. So for me, I think almost all of the characters that, that I really liked served as a role model at one time or another, even if it was just, even if it was just for 10 minutes when I was in Japan trying to figure out how to get away, how to get around the, the subway station system and I, and I followed Gary Albright or Steve Williams because they were leading the way or whatever. I was kind of the, they were the leader. I was the follower, uh, and I was using, you know, them, to, you know, to, to, to pattern my, my next moves after. Doesn't that make sense? Oh. No, that, that's, that's a natural, that's a natural that's instinct to follow somebody that's doing good. Uh, even though some of the guys were not such good role models after the show, but they were not with role models while they were in the ring. You know? Yeah, Harry, you were going to say that's definitely not a role model, right? I'd, I'd say that's more like mentoring. Again, you know, the... What's the definition of role model in the in the Webster and all that shit? Um, all Anybody got that, that info? No, but I got a dictionary right here, so... Uh, uh, Harry, Harry Flash seems to know the answer. That's, uh, well, uh, I had, you know, like a mentor. A person looked to by others as an example to be imitated. Ooh. That, that, that can mean a lot of different by things. Others as an example to be imitated. So for me, I think that even if a person is a bad role model, they're still a role model. You know, like, you don't want, you know, you're going to have a new Fonzie baby. You don't want that kid necessarily taken after some, uh, you know, uh, grungy kids that can't pull their pants up and, 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 and you know, are all pierced up and tattooed and that, that might, but, your kid might like that. That might be in. That might be what's in style then. It might be in style now. I don't fucking know. But, but right, oh. this is a good subject for me because I'm going to have to be some type of role model for my grandbaby. If it's a boy or a girl, I'm going to be a role model. So i got to practice good good uh, things in front of the, the child. Yes. Yeah, I'm the granddaddy. That's right, daddy. I like it. That's right, granddaddy. Hey, Rob, let me ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Um, or when I first came around ECW, you're the guy that told me a lot of the shit about the business and like told me keep away from certain people, blah blah blah. Would that make you my role model or my mentor? I think that if if the subject we're talking about is like, let's say you're doing this little study in your mind, and you're in the study is how to act around the pro wrestlers, um, you know, how to act around them. Absolutely, I was a role model for you there. I would say it was more like a teacher type of thing. Okay, but I don't really see the difference, and, and that's that's maybe where you know where the confusion is because to me, Fonzie RVD's definition of a role model is uh, somebody who who's who serves as a model for someone to to um, to do their role after. You know, even if it's just a small temporary thing. I mean, I think I use role model as a much broader term because so many people use it as such a specific term. Like some people think it means that you're famous and that you have action figures and have millions of fans. And no, it doesn't take that to be a role model. Well, when I, when I was in Phoenix, Arizona this last, uh, uh, this month, I was there for eight days at uh, uh, Chase Stadium where the Diamondbacks played. 
the uh, Chris, who was the owner of Keith, uh, the, the company, he, I was using him as a role model, so tell me if I'm wrong. I was using him, as, I was following his lead on how the lead, I had 10 different guys under me, kind of like the locker room. Um, you know, just giving out finishes and helping the guys get their matches together and stuff like that. So, but I used him as a role model to, uh, supersede the, the project I was doing. Nice. All right. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was that be a role model already? Um, I, I mean, I, it, that's what we're trying to decide, you know, is exactly. That's kind of like your thing in Japan when you were role, kind of, uh, yeah, it's like on a smaller term, like if you really, uh, I think it depends on where you put the walls up on, on what you're talking about. I think for, for, for certain functions, I think we use a lot more people as role models th- than we realize, you know. I mean, I mean, it could be that you look at the news person and you like the way they have their hair. You say, well, I'm going to try and wear my hair that day, you know, if you're gay. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens, then even though you wouldn't name that person as a, a huge influence on, on your life and you wouldn't think of them as being a role model you would name in your autobiography, I think from that perspective that they did serve as that. You know, Joel from Arizona, what do you think? Um, I, don't, I don't really know. I forget what you <laughs> That's fair. Hey, you just you're like your 20, Daddy. I'm not enough. Yeah. Who stole the fucking dope? <laughs> All right, Joel stole it. All right, dude. Well, uh, listen, uh, Joel, as I tell Fonzie, and also let me let Officer Rex back in. He's trying to get in the back door if I can do that. Officer Rex, you with us? Yeah, hey, is that kid from Ireland still on? Yes, he is. Yeah, why from I was telling her about that. She said his parents are going to kill him when they get the phone bill. <laughs> you hear that, Aaron? No, I'm using like a. We have the service BT. It only costs um, like four P for someone. I got it half built. Um, last time I was here, way more months ago. It's up for muscle spasms or something. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Do we just get like a pharmaceutical recipe over the radio? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, Fonzie, we we're also yeah, talking yeah. about. Abuse of authority and power, and so you know, like um, that, it, it, I think everybody agrees that the government abuses their power, you know, more than anybody. That's probably the the biggest example we can think of, you know. But we brought up a lot of subjects, you know, doctors and priests, people that we put our our trust and faith into, uh, and, and then they abuse it. So, Fonzie, all your years of uh, being out there in the world, uh, add something to this. Abuse of power. How about when uh, when you worked for uh, uh, wait is Fonzie still on? Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right, Daddy. Um, you know, how about um, a lot of people think that Vince McMahon, uh, and I'll agree, maybe is, is abuses his power because you sign a contract that says, okay, I'm going to come work for you. Um, here's the terms. You sign it, and then you end up working like w- fucking way three, four times as many days is is as much as you thought you would, but then I think it's an abuse of power to then imp- imp- implement a dress code, which I didn't originally agree to, and now all of a sudden i got to wear long pants and button-up shirt and dress shoes, or I'm going to get paid $500, and, and then implement the drug uh, the, uh, the drug testing, and all the, all the things that they change after they already have you, and the schedule they put you on, um, that's pretty abusive, and they have the power to do that, because you know, uh, you could, especially since the business is so monopolized that, uh, with the exception of TNA, if you're not wrestling for WWE, then you're not ba- you're not able to be full time and, and and be a superstar on top. You know, you have Vince was a pretty much a one man market. He took advantage of that big time. There was no negotiating. He paid everybody whatever the fuck he wanted to pay him and gave him whatever work schedule he wanted to. Pretty good example there of abuse of authority. But maybe you can hold them to your contract. If you sign a contract in December and then the rules change, depending on your contract, you can, you know, do what your contract says. But it might be, you got to read the small print, Daddy. Vince is the smartest I know. Yeah, no, no doubt. And of course, there's always, uh, there's always the argument, you know, that WWE 
wrestlers should be, by definition, employees instead of independent contractors. And, I mean, someone tried to bring up a lawsuit recently, and that always happens, where they say, by definition, by the working hours, the load that they carry and all that, that it's more than an independent contractor, but they don't get the, in, the benefits of employee because it's not that a lot of people say that's abuse you know but so far the court systems have agreed with Vince and I do too on that if you agree to a deal yeah it's hard it's hard to be Vince because I don't care you know from Hulk Hogan to, to Fonzie uh, he, he's got the upper hand on you and uh, I think, I was in, I'm sorry Fuzzy I was just going to say I think that uh, when I was in uh, high school that Mrs. Rosa my, my bitch uh, speech teacher abused her authority of being a teacher to try to crush my dreams because she hated pro wrestling and because I was always obnoxious and would always uh, talk about uh, wrestling and nothing else when I was a kid she used to say you, you will not be a wrestler you know and, and she used to say stuff like that and that's, that is uh, abusive you know she could have she could have knocked me off the path that I went on if I had listened to her and you put a lot of trust in the teacher especially as a kid yeah that's pretty heavy of her to, uh, that's a piece of power right there I would say you know, who, who is she to uh, say, uh, don't be a wrestler or don't be a, but she's pushing you towards uh, being a school teacher or something. Or, uh, don't take our dreams away. Hey, this is why we're living in the USA, daddy. Free speech. Uh, do what we want. Hey, fuck Mrs. Rosa. Right, Fuzzy? That's what I got to say. Tell her to go fuck herself. Exactly. Fuck yeah, everybody agrees. All right, fuck, go fuck yourself, Mrs. Rosa. Okay, you stinky bitch. <laughs> hey, Rob, take my nice. All right, well, uh, fuck, man, we're almost we're almost winding down, man. We fucking. Hey, ask, ask Aaron would know a lot about abuse of power. I was in Ireland on August fifteenth, nineteen ninety eight. They blew up the fucking town he lives in. Who did? Somebody blew up the fucking guy's town. Is that true, Aaron from Aaron from Ireland? They blew up a guy's town. He said they blew up your town. My town? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, they blew up the town, yeah. <laughs> in 19, 1998 or something. Yeah, 1998, August 15th. Yeah, well, you got to remember, he's 15 and you're talking 12 years ago, so he was only three. My sister was actually in that bomb, that's how I remember it. Okay, well, uh, I guess that's abuse of power. I don't know who had the power to do that, you know, but... Uh, basically, you know, um, just having new, I think, I think having a gun gives you the, you know, the power to kill somebody just by moving your finger, which is a power that I don't think anybody should have. And definitely anytime someone uses a gun, whether it's to carjack someone or fucking knock over a 7-Eleven or God forbid, fucking uh, do a home invasion and actually hurt somebody, uh, I think definitely that's an abuse, uh, and I think it's all too tempting. Just having that much power, uh, I think anything other than just, you know, uh, target practicing on the uh, at the gun range or, or leaving it locked up in the drawers is, is, is abuse, really. You know that old saying, guns don't kill people, people kill people. That's what they say. That's what they say. But if they didn't have guns, those people wouldn't be too tough. You know, I mean, a gun. The other, I saw on the news, a three-year-old is in critical condition because the six-year-old brother shot the three-year-old kid with a gun. That was in Tampa. That was in Tampa. Just happened the other day. The father left a loaded gun on the TV and he went to work. And the okay, so that's retarded. Boom. All the gun lovers can just blame that on the dad, their responsibility of leaving the gun out. But the fact is, the you know, what you just said about people kill people, no. Take the gun out of that equation and tell me that six-year-old would have killed that three-year-old. Right. Uh, fucking retarded. Yeah, it is. That's how I feel. All right, shit. Well, um, fuck, we talked about a lot of shit. It's like the end of the show. Uh, Michael Porter, you've been on. I'm going to unmute you because we didn't really talk that seconds. much. Michael Porter, thanks for calling in, dude. We're ending this show. You got anything you want to be remembered by uh, <laughs> until we do our next show? I uh, just. Uh, I hope everybody has a, a great week, and we'll see you all next week. And as far as abuse of power, I think uh, a lot of it has to do with the, uh, the different church leaders uh, abusing children. That is a major, major abuse of power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? In, in, yes, absolutely. Also, since you brought that up, just the fact that we as men have strength over women, that's a lot of power. Anytime that, 
they, they manhandle women, you know, like, rape them, shit like that, of course. That's definitely an abuse of power. It's like, it, it have, I mean, is there, is there, here's what we should talk about. Is there use of power without abuse of power when it comes to something like that? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah. It sound like it. But we don't got time to talk about that shit now anyway. Everybody have a good week. Aaron, it was a pleasure having you in. Go to, go to bed, pleasure. dude. Thanks. Harry Slash, thanks, Sabu, and, and Booker T, and, of course, wonderful Willie Atter. And uh, I don't know if we're going to do it again next week or not, but go to robvandam.com and check out the photo caption contest, win a T-shirt, go rent wrong side of town, uh, have a good laugh, baby. Ten Time seconds. again, we got ten seconds left. They're going to cut us off. Say bye, baby. Bye, baby. Drop that down.